guys, welcome to my today's video. I'm going to paint a scene from House Moving Castle. Actually, I'm recording this voiceover for the second time already. I did one yesterday and it was so bad, I, I just couldn't bring myself to make it the actual voiceover. So I'm doing this second time and I'm not sure this will be the better one, but we'll see. As you can probably hear, I still feel very awkward doing these voiceovers. And it's really weird listening to yourself and realizing how bad you actually speak. And I realized it's really obvious I can't pronounce the R properly, so sometimes it's just driving me crazy, but I'm trying and hopefully I get better at this. So, let's, let's go back to the how. I recently read a book for the first time. I have to admit, I, I didn't know there was a book. So when they announced it in a, a private Patreon Discord, a member of, I was immediately hooked and I found the book and immediately bought it and then I patiently waited until the May start so I can begin to read the book with the others. And I have to say it was really enjoyable reading. I kept laughing hearing the story quite a lot. After finishing the book I decided to go and watch the movie. I've already seen the movie maybe 10 years ago. But I have to say I didn't remember much. I only remembered the artwork and the characters of Sophie and Hal and Calcifer of course. But I, I didn't remember much. And I am notorious for not remembering what I did read or what, especially the endings. How, how is that possible? I need to watch the movie three or four times to remember the ending just for a while. Sometimes it, it's really funny that everybody around me knows I watched some movie, but I, I can't remember. I have to say, right after reading the book, the movie seemed so much different. It was so heavily focused on the war and Howl is, is different, is portrayed like a hero of some sort and is fighting in the war while he's changing to bird-like creature. None of it is in the book. So it was very strange to read and know that I just read the story and it's absolutely different. There was maybe one mention of building an army or something like this. We'll see. I, I don't remember and I just read it like two weeks ago. And I have to say what I liked about the movie better was Sophie's changing between her older and younger self. I'm not sure if they mentioned this in the book. But what I definitely missed in the movie was they, they basically didn't tell you Sophie is a witch. They could just easily make her talk to the heads she was making or, or something. Like It's not that difficult to include this part to the story. Also, there was a scene when Howl got angry and threw a tantrum and his whole body got covered in green slime. And what they did in the movie, they included a scene when Sophie is trying to get Howl to the bathroom and she realizes he has no clothes on and the look on her face, it, it was priceless. I started to laugh really hard on that. So, to somehow summarize it, I like the book better, of course, but the movie is it's not bad. Both of those are great. If you let each other stand as its own and don't compare too much, what I just basically did, but I can do what I want. It's my video. If you've only seen the movie, please go read the book. It's adorable and really funny. I had a great time reading it. Also, I should say something about the painting, shouldn't I? 
immediately after watching the movie I just quickly skimmed through the scenes and took some screenshots. I decided on this scene from the ending mostly because there is a calcifer who doesn't like calcifer. Well, maybe I when I trying to paint him, but otherwise he's he's such a great character. And also because there is gorgeous background and I really wanted to try and paint it as I don't usually paint backgrounds. I did uh, draw this scene in my sketchbook two times and then I transferred it to the Fabriano acrylic paper. I love its texture and I have such a big pad of it so I have to use it up somehow. So I guess all my future gouache paintings will be on this paper. Which I'm not mad about, I love this paper so much. At first I plan to open my watercolors but after studying the art style for a bit I decided to go with gouache and I have to say I'm quite glad I did. I busted out my small primary set of Holbein Aquila gouache. I have to say it's the best gouache I've ever had. It's third brand I've tried and I like it the most so far. I did start with the background with one layer of gouache just to place the colors so it will be easier for me to paint on later. And then I kept layering and layering and layering and defining and oh, I had almost two hours of footage of painting just the background. If you look closely at the scene, they do such a great job with suggesting what you should see without actually drawing it to the detail. So I tried to do the same. For the whole time I just painted some random blobs of grass and trees and flowers and rocks and the background was quite a long time in the ugly stage. But it somehow looks okay <laughs> in the end.
So after finishing the background, there was time for painting the characters. They have really flat colors, so it was absolutely different experience. And I have to say, I can never make flat colored layer of gouache or watercolor. So it was also great practice. My first layer for Sophie's face was too brown, but I made it work with the second one. I spent so much time trying to mix the right shade, I almost gave up, but I think it works now. Also, I'm sorry if you see some small bugs or something flying around. The thing is, we bought a plant and we didn't notice there were some bugs in the soil. The plant had died in maybe three days. We did throw the soil out, but the bugs stayed and we just can't get rid of them. The funny thing is, I don't see them much around, but every time I sit to paint, they just spawn right around me. When I applied this red color, I thought, you, you just screw this up, it looks awful. How can this work? I mixed in lots of yellow and white and blended the hell out of it. It somehow looks okay. Then I also painted in some green lines just to suggest he is see-through and you can see mountains behind him.
lastly I did paint in the pink flowers around Sophie just so I can avoid doing the line art for a bit I knew I had to do the line art but I just couldn't bring myself to do it the brushes I had on hand were not thin enough for the line art so I had to go through my full stash of brushes and I did found one so no more excuses for not doing it in gouache and oh my it was so stressful especially the first line and then I just went with it I was so scared of messing this up when I already did spend so much time This is how the painting turned out. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching the video. I did try to make it not too long. My first draft had maybe 30 minutes, but I didn't want to bore you to death with 20 minutes of drawing grass. And see you next time!